today we are going to install some awning support panels. Um, one of the things that fifth wheels have problems with when they're out parked for a long time or even for a short time is the wind in their awnings. The awnings are notoriously weak and they are notoriously famous for being broken by the wind. In fact, we saw one get broken here just the other day. The woman had to have somebody come out and repair it because the wind gets the awnings to start flapping and then as they bounce up and down they either break the awning itself or they rip the awning out of the um, out of the fifth wheels wall. Neither, which of a, uh, neither of which is a good um, outcome. So I uh, found somebody that makes brackets for awning poles and what we're going to do is we're going to install the brackets. Actually I'm just going to show you the, the installed brackets and then we're going to go ahead and install one of the poles for the awning support and then show you how it all works when it's all said and done. Um, once installed these awning support poles can stay on the trailer. They don't have to be taken off and all you really have to do when you get to set up is pull out your awning uh, deploy your poles and then use a ratchet strap to tie it to the ground so there's a little bit of work involved but at the end of the day you're gonna have an awning that is rock solid if you look here these awnings can get pretty bouncy right this is a pole that's already there but once that thing starts bouncing it's going to possibly cause some damage one of the other things that can happen is a lot of people will go ahead and they'll they'll tie their awnings down with a ratchet strap and they won't use a pole to support it so what ends up happening is they use that ratchet strap and put tension on the awning well that tension is pulling the awning out of the wall of the RV so it's not an ideal solution either so if you're doing that just know that you're putting tension on the actual bolts that hold the awning to the RV so you've got the potential to be causing damage as well so um, get yourself some type of support for the awning so that when you actually strap it down and make it secure, you're not trying to rip it off the side of the fifth wheel. I will post a link for where I got this bracket kit from. Um, if, you're, uh, if you've got a shop, you could probably make it yourself, but this came already pre-fabricated, pre, uh, pre powder-coated with all the hardware to install it. So the first thing I did uh, before, I, before I started is I got these painter poles, and there's several different types of them at... Uh, at Home Depot or Lowe's or even Amazon and if you buy the kit from the guy that I'm going to post in the in the comments he actually gives you a link to it but basically it's an adjustable painter pole where you can adjust the height to depend on where you know what you need where you're camping and then I went ahead and the end of the painter pole has a threaded socket well this is in the way of the awning pole so I went ahead and cut these off all you need is a metal uh, metal blade and a jigsaw and you can cut these right off as you can see, I already have the one awning pole up there and it's bolted in. These particular ones that I bought at Home Depot tonight, um, you can see where I cut the end off, they had screws in here to hold that end in there. Now I tried to pry it out, wouldn't come out, so that's why I just cut it off. Um, it's pretty well stuck in there. But what I did is I took those screw holes, because I don't have a drill press here in the campground, and I used those screw holes as guide holes for the bolts that are going to hold this pole up to the awning. It's going to be the permanent part of the install. So I went ahead and drilled, took the screws out, drilled that hole out, drilled that hole out, and now we can go ahead and hang it up there. And that way it'll be secured to the awning like this one is. So we're going to go ahead and move over there and install it. If you look up there, I don't have one installed yet, but I don't have the pole installed yet, so you can kind of see it where we've got a bracket installed. The bracket's got the bolt hole, and then it's got the awning tie down, which is the actual round hole up there where you tie your rat ratchet strap to. So this just bolts up there with one of the pre-existing bolts for the awning. Um, you take it out, put it up there, and then you just add another bolt. You'll have to drill a hole in your awning support, which isn't really a big deal. If you look, you can see that it's just got two bolts holding it up there and then the round eyelet to, for your ratchet strap to tie it down. So you should be able to see with that setup right there. What I'm going to do now is simply just bolt this pole up there. We've got a little ladder that we use when we're out and about. It's not really that big, but it allows us to get to most places that we go. So, I just simply took the bolt, ran it through the hole, through the awning support, and I got my ladder in the way, so let's go ahead and move that. I'm going the other direction, because I don't want the bolt to be anywhere near my awning the end of the bolt is sticking out. 
go ahead and put that up there. And then we're just going to tighten down the nut. You'll see that this is a uh, lock nut, so it's not going to come loose, which is really nice. Highly recommend on anything you put on an RV to use one of those nylon washer lock nuts because it seems that everything rattles around here. Because we're using that nylon nut, you don't have to tighten this down super tight, just snug, and it shouldn't back off at all. You want to leave it loose enough so that the, the pole can actually swivel on it, because that's the whole intent here. And then, with this one, there are screw types, and then there's this one where you can just loosen it up, so you get to a point where you can lock it in find yourself a firm spot on the ground and then we can add the uh, add the tie down to it and ratchet strap it down all right so this is the bracket that goes up here to hold it in place what's going to happen is I'm going to drill a hole through that pole and it'll go uh, there's a there's a retaining clip that'll go through these poles to hold it while we're traveling the kit provides rivets top rivets to bolt this in but I'm going to go ahead and screw it in because I prefer to do that rather than rivet so it's pretty tight so I'm going to have to use a pair of pliers because I don't have the right size wrench. But we're going to go ahead and screw this in here with some lock, bar lock washers and lock nuts. So now that we've got that bracket up there, what you see is that you can just shorten the pole up, swing it up here, and clip it in place. The clip that we're going to use for that is... One of these D-clips right here. Let me see if you can actually see. Hold on. Yeah. So you see now that I got that bracket on there, we can actually take the pole once we are ready to go and just shorten it up, swing it into place. And then I'm going to drill a hole through there when I get a drill press or access to a drill press. And this clip will go through there and just hold it in place while we're traveling. And then once we get to our spot, swing it down tie it out. These are the type of clips that we use to hold them in place while we're traveling so it's super simple and quick. If you look here, we'll go ahead and swing this around a little bit. So what we've got is the awning pole and you can see down there that we've put a um, the ground tie down in the ground here so that we can actually put the awning pull out and strap it down so what we're going to do now bear with me while I get all my stuff um, oh, tip for ratchet straps while you're traveling when you don't need them go ahead and clip uh, put a wire tie on it zip tie on it makes it super simple to store and keeps you from having to have a big gigantic tangled mess which is what usually happens then you just cut it off they're disposable I mean you can get hundreds of them for nothing so I take a ratchet strap and put one up here on the hook up here I guess you can't see that Put one up on the hook, and then what we're going to do is just strap it down to that ground stake right there. So we've got our pole installed. You can see this hanging loose right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop it down, and then I'm going to give it, hook it up right there to where it stops. We go ahead and take the ratchet strap, hook it through the hole there, bring it down here. You can see that I went ahead and sunk a ground tie down into the ground. And those could be gotten just about anywhere. And then I'm going to simply ratchet to strap this down. So we'll see how much more stable it is. You 
see that this awning will no longer bounce. It's not going anywhere. And I didn't put any pressure on the actual RV, which is what I was talking about earlier. So there's no pressure on the RV. It's all against the pole. So shouldn't do anything to the RV and should keep it there when the, when the wind starts blowing. There should be no bouncing or flapping or anything like that. So I'm going to go over there and do the other one. Then I'm going to finish installing the, uh, the brackets that I showed you. Drill a hole in the pole and we'll, we'll be all done. So, a nice way to keep your awning from blowing away from you or flipping over on your trailer and then not have to put your awning in every time the wind blows a little bit. Alright, so now that we've got it completely installed on both sides, you can see if I push up on this awning, it doesn't really move either way. Um, I know that these are supposed to be capable of withstanding at least 35 to 40 mile an hour winds when it's tied down like this. So, if you don't like bringing in your awning or if you don't like having to deal with um, potential wind issues, potential damage to your RV, this is a really good way to go. You can fabricate this yourself. There's parts in the uh, in the hardware store that would allow you to fabricate it yourself, or you can buy the pre-made kit. I went with the pre-made kit, and I'll go ahead and link to it again uh, in the comments. Here's the completed install. You can see that it attaches up at the top, and then we went ahead and drilled a hole in here, and we've got the D-ring clipped through there. You can see the bottom's kind of dirty from being in the ground. But as part of completing the install, I went ahead and got some Krylon paint and painted the pole white so that it actually matches the RV. This particular one, we also had to cut down a little bit because it was hanging down to about you know that far down from the RV, which would hit the side of the bed when it's hooked up. And then this one down here is going to be a little bit longer. It's about six inches longer because we didn't have to cut it off. So you can see it hanging down there. It also has the hole drilled through it with the D-clip holding it in place. So that when we deploy it, it's just a matter of pulling this out, rolling the awning out, and then adjusting this to whatever length we need, putting it in and tying it down with a ground tie down. Now we don't have it set up here in this particular campground because this campground does not allow us to put any stakes into the ground. This campground is kind of picky about that because of the irrigation system, but you can see the pole there and the pole there. It's just a matter of rolling the awning out, unclipping it, and you can have it clipped in or unclipped when you roll the awning out. I prefer to have it clipped in so that it's not hanging down and hitting anything in the way and then stake it down to the ground. Thank you for watching. I hope that you found this informative and give us a thumbs up, like our channel, subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more how-to videos and of course videos on our traveling around the country once we get back to traveling. Thank you and have a good day.